in the midst of the bailout talks makes government's work very difficult. Speaking on PM Express last night, he asked the workers to give government some time. Like I said, we are in a war with the fighting. The world is not the same world three years ago. Let me, let me ask you this, since, of course, you're the defense minister. In the midst of the crisis we are in, now we've decided to go to the IMF. We know that it, your yeah. program um, will come with cuts. Um, you've just talked about it. But we know from history, the IMF will say, you know, with your wage bill, can we control it? I mean, the workers, since the whole of yesterday, have been agitating. This is human security. Um, the teachers are on strike. <laughs> Do you worry that this will provide fuel for instability? We, we, it's, it's a big worry for us to ensure, but it's also a challenge for us that we have to do our work well. It's a worry and a challenge to us. And maybe for some reason the government has put some of us where we are, we are to do that work. Like I said, we have to be on our feet. It's our work to ensure that there's no instability. It's our work to ensure that terrorists don't come into the country. It's our work to ensure that the armed forces and the police service and all the security agencies do their work efficiently. It's our work to ensure that the country remains safe. How are you doing that in the midst of all the economic challenges? I mean, teachers, unprecedented, all four of them, withdrawn their service. Yesterday, the senior staff of the university, UTAC, TUC, all of them telling you. In fact, yesterday on my show, Ghana Medical Association also says they also want 20%. I mean... Everything seems to be so, hitting you at the so same time. It's, How are you managing to ensure that that doesn't lead to some insecurity situation? I know the C word doesn't like to be used, but a coup has been mentioned in the past. Um, people are afraid that it may degenerate into an instability. How are you dealing with that? So as defense minister, all our appeal to all these bodies is to say that we've taken the decision to take our program to the IMF. They should give government some bit of time and let's negotiate. They should give government some bit of time and let's talk together. Let's, let's, this idea of, oh, I'm going to go on strike, I'm going to do this. The government has all the means, they will give it to you. This government has shown very good faith to everybody that if they have the means, they will do it. They've never disrupted the workers. They've never shouted on workers. They've negotiated with workers on good faith. I plead with them that they should give government the opportunity to negotiate with them in good faith. Can you imagine you are leading an IMF team and workers are asking for maybe between six to eight billion extra income or extra expenditure on the budget? It makes your work very, very difficult. I just plead that, yes, things are difficult. I, we all accept. It's not the fault of a worker that maybe if he was earning 3,000 Ghana CD yesterday, that 3,000 may buy less things. Mm. But like I said, let's plead with everybody to give government the opportunity to negotiate very well with them. Mm -hmm. But I really, really worry that whatever we do, we should look at our kids and ensure that we don't leave a country where tomorrow those kids will find Ghana a different place. We've managed ourselves very well up to now. We will continue to do whatever we have to do. And I will, and, and I will give Ghanaians a promise. We'll continue to do whatever we have to do to keep this country very safe. Extremely very, very safe. But it also depends on how they help us including all of us, how we behave, what we do, what we eat, our demands, our tastes, everything that will make what we are. Trust me, I said, we are at a war time without fighting ourselves. And the war is what? The economic war we are fighting. Mm. And that economic war is a war that we have to take, all take seriously. We may, not, we may not have the air conditions that we used to have if we are in a war. We may not have the tar roads that we used to have if we are in a war. You may never have the water that you used to have before if you are in a war situation. Well, he says Ghana's current economic war demands that everybody contributes to the war effort by tightening your belt. Uh, he says he and his ministers are already taking deep cuts as their contribution in the midst of what he calls the economic war. The difficulties that the world face, will, all of us, all of us, not just, not just anybody, all of us, we have to tighten our belt a little bit. And I'm happy the president has given ministers a stern warning. Mm -hmm. Remember, you are leading people. Go out there and be a servant. How are you tightening your belt, Dominic Nitewo? So We've talked about your ministry, but Dominic Nitewo as a minister, how are you tightening your belt? I have to tighten my belt because I have to live in, be, within my miss. How? I'm living within my miss. My salary has been reduced by 30% because, because of the promise so that So you've been made. taking 30% less salary? Of course. Since I have when? to. I have to. 
I have to take 30% since the announcement was made. Mm. And so I now know, and my wife knows that, look, Nitu salary has been reduced. So if you are eating three eggs a day, you eat half an egg. It's as simple as that, or you don't eat at all. That is, that is an egg that it's not real, right? It's you not it's, reduce the, the can I, amount it, of food you're can eating I, can now. Can I finish? It is real. I'm a Catholic, and I will not go out there and be lying to anybody. So you reduce the amount of food you eat? It's not just reducing the amount of food you eat. The luxuries that maybe I've, I was, I believe I could I'm get I'm interested in that. What, what luxury have you let go? I'm saying that the luxuries that I believe I could get, I have to make sure that I want I an use. example. Which, which so for you? example, like I said, for example, I use more public means than before. What, what possible public means was that? I'm coming. I use more public means than before. I use more car to travel to the north. On Saturday, I drove the north myself. Okay. I, I, so I, you, you didn't use your driver? I, I, the, I just mm. myself and my driver. I drove myself because I need to. We all have but, to but cut that, down. But, but you're driving your state-issued vehicle? No. You're driving your own personal I, I, I bought, yes. Oh, you bought your own fuel? Oh, of course. I have oh, to so you're buying your own fuel? I have to. For a long time, I don't use state fuel. Except maybe... But, but they give you state one day. Yes. The way the defense ministry is structured, if I want fuel, I, I can go to Bermakam and get fuel. Mm. Outside my working hours, I don't have the means to use state fuel because I don't get coupons mm. like any other minister. Okay. I don't get coupons like any other minister. So... Whether I'm in my constituency, I'm in Tamale, I'm in Takrade, anywhere, I cannot get, I cannot use state for well. I don't, I don't, state has never provided me with uh, utilities. No, ever since I became a minister, I've never, state So you're paying your own electricity? My own electricity, your own I pay. Water. My own water. My own, everything. Gas, everything, I pay. Gas? It's, no, the... The gas. Okay, gas, for, the okay, gas for, for your cooking, cooking and everything. Cooking. I, you I, pay I, yourself? I, I pay myself. Mm. I've never, since I became... A minister the state has never paid any of these things for me at all because i live in my own house and for you who is living in your house and i know that close to about 70 percent of the ministers of akufado are living in their own houses that's how come the state is not looking after them and because for the state to look after you first you have to be living in a state bungalow if you are living in your own house then you have to bring the bills to the for, to like say to the ministry to True. to come and reclaim. Do Which, you send your bills? For I don't. It's a, for me, it's a hassle. It's a waste of time. First, the money is not even there. So why should I do that? I live. Mm. I, I live for uh, my own means. According according to the last uh, emolument committee, a minister, cabinet minister, is earning slightly above thirty thousand CDs. So thirty percent cut in that. You see, the difficulty with me, you are the you difficulty. Are, with, the you, difficulty is you are that, in the twenties or just no. It's not. That. The, you see, when you reach a certain uh, salary bracket, you fall in a certain tax bracket. So you actually earn, you pay more taxes, so mm. you may, might even earn less. But leave that aside. The difficulty is that if you go and ask a typical member of parliament his salary, he may not know, unless he goes to look at his pay slip. Because he has a lot of things he has to that will go out of it. The, you see? So you have loans to pay? Everybody, go and check my, my pay slip. We're all paying loans. Because you have to, you have to survive. I have a car loan that I picked and bought a car from a car, and they are taking that loan from, from my salary. Well, we have no that. sympathies for you. I understand. Yes, and you are right. You made the decision to. to I know. To go. I made the decision to go there, yeah. so I cannot blame anybody. Yeah, Four thousand is what most teachers can can get. You are still not getting what I'm trying to say. I, I get what you're saying. Do you reckon that the government is doing enough on the executive side to cut waste? and to show to the Ghanaian people, the teachers who are on strike, that we are in this with you. In politics, there's nothing called never. So if there are ways that the government can improve on cutting, we should do it. And so I'm not able to say that we, are doing, we have done enough or we haven't done enough. All I say is that the government has done a lot. Mm. It may not be enough. It may be enough. But I can say for a fact that the government has done a lot. Ministers have taken a lot of cut. Ministers have taken a lot of sacrifices. Like I said to you, Close to 70% of ministers of Akufa, especially the cabinet ministers that I know, they don't stay in government bungalows. They don't, they don't use government fuel. They don't do that. All the security ministers, we don't use coupons, for example. Well, as you just heard there, that's the uh, Defence Minister Dominic Nitewo uh, first addressing the uh, key issue 
with the labor agitations. We have an industrial unrest currently with all 42 unions on strike. The classrooms are empty because the teachers aren't there. There are many more labor unions uh, complaining. He says he's really, really genuinely worried that that might trigger instability. He's asking the workers to give government some time uh, and it's indicated that their demands making it very difficult in the midst of the negotiations with the IMF for a bailout, um, making things pretty extremely difficult, also making the point uh, that we all have to tighten our belts because, as he says, we are in an economic war. I want to bring in president of the National Association of Graduate Teachers. Of course, he has led his uh, his teachers out of the classrooms and they are on strike currently. Uh, Mr. Angel Kabonu, thank you, sir, for your time here on Top Story. Yeah, good evening. You just had a defense minister there. He says, as a defense minister, as a key member of the National Security Architecture, he's worried that your action and that of your other colleagues uh, has a real potential of triggering stability. He's asking you uh, that uh, you should give government some time because your actions currently is making it pretty difficult with all the conversations happening with the IMF. Your reaction? Well, I am surprised. I don't know what triggers instability more than hunger, distribution, and economic pressure. That is what triggers instability. And industrial action everywhere in the world it's when the workers have got into the cul de sac, where the wor uh, workers realize that the economic situation is making them breathless. Then they react naturally. No worker group in those countries gets up and for the farm of it engages in industrial action. And we have said countless number of times that we can indicate or give the indication as why. A, B, C, D, E is suffocating Ghanaian workers economically. Yesterday, the Deputy PUC Secretary General reiterated the point from the point of view of the PUC, the unquote hashtag that is being meted onto the Ghanaian by the current economic situation. And indeed, Whenever we have a, a, an economic uh, malaise anywhere in the world, the, wh what, the only thing it affects is the people. Because if economic malaise do not affect the people, then why do anyone worry? The ultimate destination of any economic difficulty is the people. So the people are reacting to that economic situation all over the world, all over the world, workers react to economic situation when there is dwindling fortunes of their real income. And that is exactly what has happened to us. The city is depreciated to such extent that it renders the income we take on a monthly basis almost useless. Inflation is gotten so high that people's savings is eroded on a daily basis. And these are the issues that we are raising. And we did not start raising it yesterday. We started raising this issue before the talk of IMF was erected in those countries. Yeah. In any case, were these not the people who told us, beating their chest, that they would never, never go to IMF? Is that Why is it now today? That IMF is determining the uh, as to whether uh, we make demands or we don't make well, demands. Well, he says times have changed. And he, there's a quote here I need to present to you, something he said. He says, if government had the means, we will give it to you because government has kept faith with you in the past. Uh, well, uh, let me ask the question. Who is in charge of this country and the management? It, it is a political class. They are in charge of the management of this country. They have indicated to you and I that they have the capability and the competences to manage the, 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 this country and take us to the promised land. They have told us that we have enough resources in this country. They have described our economy as Gottesberg economy, and they will transform this economy to a modern, productive economy. Why should I now be carrying the yoke of somebody's uh, outcome? I mean, the defense minister makes the point that... He has taken a 30% pay cut. Many of his ministers say he says he now buys his own fuel because of the current economic difficulties. He's paying his own electricity and water. He says 
all of us, Ghanaians, workers included, must, quote, tighten your belt. You what accept is 30% that? of 30,000 Ghana cities? Well, my math is not as good, but I mean, definitely in the 20s, way down, it comes down to the 20s. Yes, but that 20, the graduate teacher in the Ghana Education Service earns 10 times less than what he earns when he takes a 30% pay cut. The graduate mm -hmm. teacher in the Ghana Education Service earns 10 times less what he takes when he takes a 30% pay cut. So the scales are not the same. The numbers are not on the same line. I, and it cannot be on the same line. I, I, I saying that you're not tightening any more of your belt that you uh, already have. In fact, we don't even have any other flesh to tighten. Because we are in a state of perpetual... A tightening, we are in a state of... Uh, Perpetual belt tightening. <laughs> permanent belt tightening. Um, Mr. Kabunu, stay with me briefly. I, I, I want to test the uh, Defence Minister's concerns, what he says his big worry about your actions and that of the your other colleagues in the Labour unions uh, potentially triggering instability in Ghana. Uh, Professor uh, Kwesiening uh, joins us on the telephone line, right? Like you know him, a security analyst par excellence. Thank you very much, sir, for your time here on Top Story, uh, Professor Ening. I mean, we hear the defense minister articulate his fear that, um, you know, what Angel Kabuno and his colleagues are doing and what is happening currently in the midst of the IMF bailout talks and economic crisis. He says a big fear of his that this could lead to potential instability, but he's committing that they'll do everything possible to avert that. But he, he thinks that workers have a lot to play in averting that. You share in his, his fear? Is his fear grounded? Um, no, I think there are a couple of things. Demonstrations are the legitimate, democratically protected rights of citizens to express their concerns about the way their country is being governed. That's number one. Number two, those who lead demonstrations are, however, enjoined by the law to ensure that during this period of expressing their concerns. It doesn't get it doesn't get out of hand to pose threat to life and property. Now when people in authority have deliberately presented facts that are untrue and run down an institution in which we are a shareholder, creating a political discourse of disaffection and disrespect for this international institution, then suddenly telling us or the citizenry to turn round and not be critical raises fundamental concerns about the quality of that political discourse and what our political leaders take the citizenry for. So I think it is up to political leaders to be tolerant of citizens' concerns and their criticism of why we were told one story that was patently false and the sudden shift and the order to go to the IMF. And I think a more honest, transparent acceptance as to why we need to go there and why earlier comments that have been shown to be patently false were made. Speaking to use fluffy Argument uh, will not work. People have pro become too alert and enlightened to some of these things. That I think a more transparent, dialogic approach from politicians will be much more beneficial. I mean, pro profaning. I have still have uh, Angel Carbon on the line for the first time in a long time, um, and and this is freedom president. All four teacher unions at the same time say they are not going to the classroom. They've withdrawn their service. The classrooms are empty now. So in, in effect, pre-tertiary is being shut down. Then we hear um, you tax say demanding 20%. Senior staff say we're giving government ultimatum next week, we'll withdraw. GMA says we also want the 20%. Uh, TUC has also joined the fray. I mean, the, the minister's concern is that if that isn't managed, that could destabilize this country that we all call 
our home and love? Look, I think there are several problems from the official side. What is it? I mean, if you read the National Security Strategy document, our ability to, to predict some of these developments are captured in that document. So what is it that our intelligence and risk assessment analysts failed to capture? And I think the minister's concern is to ask his analyst, how have you failed so horrendously that four or five big unions collectively have decided to protest? I think it is the failure of our intelligence and our analytical framework that has led the minister to show this concern. But I think Honorable Nitu should be looking much closer and probably issuing some administrative queries because it is the failure of those who ought to have questioned them. I mean, we have all this monopoly of intelligence and security people who ought to be doing the analysis. Are they doing it? Are they afraid of doing it? If they do it, what options have they presented? Okay, so there is failure somewhere. So I think it is Mr. Kabonu and his team who should rather be invited and say thank you. Thank you for truly making us aware of the concerns of, of ordinary Ghanaians. Any attempt to be dismissive of it actually will drive the, the anger underground. And when it resurfaces, it may resurface in 10, 15 times at the same time, and it will be difficult to control it. This is useful early warning that we need to demonstrate the capacity to be tolerant and open and to engage so that we can find a solution that is acceptable to all parties. Uh, Professor Enning, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Angel Kabodo, uh, Professor Enning talks about you should be invited, you should be thanked, and then government should open the books to you. From what I understand, government did that um, on Wednesday uh, with the education minister, the employment minister, representatives from the finance minister, and also the, 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 the labor commission all in that room, and they appeal to you uh, to return to the classrooms while you negotiate. And understand that you rejected that offer. Why? It looks as if we are getting conflicting statements here. One, we are being told that there is no money in the country to be given to us. And the other one, they are, we are being told to return to the classroom to negotiate. To negotiate for what? When on the one hand, you say there is no money in the country, and that the country is negotiating with a certain IMF, and that we are in dire economic situation. And then and in, in, in another breath, you are saying return to the classroom and let's negotiate. Let's negotiate on what? I, Don't you realize that there is some conflicting situation here? By the money, the money may not be available today. But it may be available tomorrow. I mean, the government is saying give us. In fact, the, the defense minister was clear that give government time is, is a phrase you use. Government simply needs time to fix the problems that you presented to them. You know, when we negotiated 4%, 7%, this was a same for us by government, indicating that the economy was in dire straits and that by 20. 22, there will be a rebound. And the rebound will create a situation where we cannot negotiate normally. But you see, there is a need for us to depart from the fine argument. The reality is the people who are working for you and I, and I'm talking about workers of this country, are not surviving because of escalating price of goods and services. Because people are dying, people are not able to work with a stable uh, uh, mindset because their real income is depreciated over time. That is what the real issue is. And then with all the myriad of taxes, attempting to tax ourselves out of the economic quagmire. 
How how do you expect the Ghanaian worker to survive? Uh, so, those concerns well noted. When do she would expect you back in the classroom, if at all? When the government responds positively to our demand. Where, where positively means pay their pay the twenty percent. Pay as the twenty percent cola. Yeah, and the, the, there's a point that the defense minister made, which is that um, if they did have the money, they would give you. You see, I don't know the the, the, the strength of the uh, defense minister in the budgetary or the economic situation in the country. Well, he sits in cabinet, so he'll, he'll have a fair idea of where they are. Well, he has made his point, but his point do not address our concerns. I mean, so as we speak tonight, do you have a, a date for the next meeting with the government? Yesterday, we were indicated to that they will invite us. We give them assurance that we are a phone call away. And when they are ready and they invite us at any time, any place, we'll make ourselves available. Well, yesterday, they, uh, the spokesperson for the education ministry indicated that in the interim, whilst you're away, uh, they've engaged national service persons to to fill in the gap. Um, that's that's okay, is it not? That is their problem. But you're not coming back anytime soon until they pay. We are waiting for government to give positively to our call. Ms. Angel Kabunu, thank you very much. He's the president of the Ghana National Association of Teachers. What's your take on the defence minister's uh, submissions on? You tightening your belt as uh, as he does, also he says, and uh, and the call on the on the workers to give government time. With in the midst of that fear that he expresses about what this could mean for our stability as a country, zero five five one 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 nine nine seven news night in a minute.